If you like vinegar syndrome, but you want something a little bit different and you're tuning in to this gem, well, I'm glad that you are. This is not typical vinegar syndrome. I knew when I saw this box, the Peter Zolkin's Apocalypse Tetralogy, I had to get it. And there is some great philosophical perspectives in dystopian type of environments from Peter Zolkin. If you love this kind of stuff, stay tuned. Let's get it going. What is up, everyone, and welcome back to Ungraduated Media, your channel, your show for all things enlightenment when it comes to philosophical perspectives and how we can actually raise ourselves in consciousness and learning when it comes to all things physical media, movies, books, and music. We don't just talk about the amazing packaging, which, of course, we love, this one being from Vinegar Syndrome. We actually get into the movies, and we discuss the movies here on this channel. So if you like that kind of stuff, do subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that like button and the bell notification so that you get alerts when we do more kinds of perspective building film documentations and coverings when it comes to all things physical media. It does really help the channel, and I appreciate it very much from you all as well, too. Okay, here's how we're going to do this. We're going to do this in four installments. This one being the movie Golem. That's the first installment from Peter Zolkin in his Apocalypse Tetralogy. Now, this comes from Vinegar Syndrome. Very soon, actually, we're going to have a release from Radiance Films that includes three of Peter Zolkin's films, but not all four. So, as much as I love Radiance and Vinegar Syndrome, somehow Vinegar Syndrome got the rights to all four of these films, whereas Radiance must have only had the rights to three or only did three. But regardless, you'll have four installments, this one being Golem. So first things first, let's get into this packaging, right? This is a beautiful box set. I knew when I first saw this, this was a part of the midway subscriber time that Vinegar Syndrome did around Memorial Day. And this is about the time that I did actually become a halfway subscriber and will likely be a full year subscriber in 2024. But this is not your typical Vinegar Syndrome movie. This is a Vinegar Syndrome Labs to start off with. This is Vinegar Syndrome Labs number four. That's probably hard to see there. Camera doesn't want to focus. Anyway, it's about as good as it's going to get. So this is a Vinegar Syndrome Labs and what a beautiful box set this is. You have the mind control element of the television here. This is going to come into play in the movie War of the Worlds, the turn of the next century, not the normal War of the Worlds. But there's these four films here from Peter Zolkin. So we'll do a quick unboxing of this set. So we have Gaga, Obi, Oba, Golem, and War of the Worlds. So this is the back of this slipcover. This is the front of the slipcover. You have a rainbow over the skull. And I almost kind of envision this as like the third eye kind of a component here. It's just staring into the void, it looks like. But here's your spine. Again, showing Vinegar Syndrome Labs number four. Same on the other side of the spine. Pop it open. You have the same kind of disc art. Here's the back. Go ahead and pause that if you want to check out more details of each of the four films on this. How this works here is we have releases dating from, I believe it's 1978 is when Golem first, sorry, 80. 1980 was Golem. 81, The War of the Worlds, Next Century. 84, Obi Oba. And Gaga was 1985. So in a five year time, time frame for films. Here's a view of the interior, reversible cover art, as well as the disc art. Disc art, pretty basic. You have two films on each Blu-ray. This is Blu-ray, not 4K. And popping out the discs, you can see the reversible cover art is the same as the uh, front cover of the box. So let's get into 
OB, or sorry, not OB, Oba. Let's get into Golem. That's the first film that we're going to be discussing here today. Now, this is a film that is in Polish with English subtitles, so you have to know that. It probably won't be for everyone if you hate to read subtitles. Personally, I don't mind it, but the film is only about an hour and a half long. It's on 1.6 to 1 ratio, so it fills up the entire screen, but it is something you have to make sure you're okay reading subtitles with. Actually, before I get into the film, I failed to show this beauty here. We have a nice little booklet that comes with this box set, which I believe is still available. This is a decent sized booklet, about, uh, I'd say probably 50 or so pages. They're not numbered in here, so I can't really tell you how many, but kind of flip through this a little bit, show you guys how they have a lot of the overviews and discussion points around each of the movies and a lot of good photography. It also ends with an interview. Let's see who this interview is actually with. I've read through a couple of the movies so far, but have not gotten to this interview, which I'm going to get to. I just got to tell you guys, I loved these films. They have such great perspectives. This is an interview with Peter Zolkin himself. So yeah, I am uh, excited to dive into this booklet and uh, of course cover all these movies here for you. So Golem, let's first talk about what a Golem actually is. So in this booklet, it talks about a golem being a sort of human creation that goes back to Jewish times that a rabbi would conjure up this being more or less for protection and oversight using Kabbalistic magic. So there's a lot of mysticism and folklore within the aspect of the movie Golem. But starting off with, there's practicality in this too, because it kind of goes along the lines of cloning and This is all from 1980. From a very futuristic, dystopian standpoint, the idea behind the films, the ones that I've seen, all four of these have this dystopian context of totalitarianism, government overstepping and control and manipulation. And in the film Golem, we have this exact thing taking place. The object of the government at this point in time in this dystopian future is to control humankind and dumb them down to a very base level to which they don't ask too many questions. They just comply. And in this film, we have the main character. I'm neglecting the name of the actor right now. I will I will put it down in the uh, scrolling at the bottom there of the screen who the actor is, but He wakes finding himself as a different being. And throughout the film, I will say it's somewhat confusing to kind of understand what's actually occurring. The main character is having this awakening. He's too smart, if you will. And he is being watched and surveyed as the creators that brought him into being are concerned that he is going to cause a rebellion because he's asking too many questions. He's becoming too self-aware. And in the movie Golem, he is watched by his, um, I guess, superintendent of his flat secretively. He meets the son of this superintendent and different characters throughout the film that are trying to kind of guide him along to show him what's actually happening. And where it's confusing is you can't, in my opinion at least, I couldn't tell exactly what was happening at what point in time with the main character. Was he the golem? Was he an actual human? The thing you have to understand when you watch this is that he is a created being. So there's multiple attempts at creating him. He is the second, I believe in this film, creation and is given his clothes that don't fit his teeth are better and than the previous golem. The previous golem had bad dental uh, hygiene and bad teeth. This version does not. And all of the memories are coming back to him in terms of who he is or who he is not in terms of what they tell him. So again, he's becoming more self-aware and the powers that be are afraid that he may... Um, basically put their entire operation at risk and, of course, the civilization around him, the town around him, to become more aware. 
So they make different references throughout the film as the different characters meet the main character of you look different, you seem different, there's something unique about you. And it just kind of cascades and builds from that point. Now this film quality, let's talk about just the picture quality here for a second. This thing looks amazing. All of these films, I was stunned in terms of what year this comes from, 40-ish years ago, right? You could not tell if this film was from just a few years ago or not. There was light film grain in this Blu-ray transfer, but it looks spectacular. Of course, in typical Vinegar Syndrome fashion, they do an amazing job with the transfer. I was thoroughly impressed with this film. Now, throughout the rest of this review, I'll be scrolling some images across the screen to show you how this really looks. These are taken directly off of my iPhone 14 Pro camera with 4K capability from my 120-inch Cinegray theater screen that's also being projected from a Sony 4K native projector. So pretty high-quality stuff. I was thoroughly impressed. I'm sure it would look good on any TV as well, too. I'm a projector person myself, but there was this really interesting yellowish-green hue that was kind of overlaid through the lens throughout most of the film, kind of to show the, I guess, dirty, dusty, griminess and the feel of this movie. It really does add to the texture, if you will, the environment of the film. Your main character, Pernet, he is trying to awaken and figure out who he really is, and there's this part where he's told to go into the church to watch a ceremony, whereas this church is actually a cinema. I'm going to play a clip for you real quick because it's so interesting how he is impacted by the images that are on the screen. They're playing these almost brainwashing type sounds of commercials that he is being kind of noticed around him that people are being basically droned into listening to this. And then they show these images of a human being created. And it makes him so sick. And he has this almost like allergic reaction where he has to get out of the theater and goes to the bathroom, pukes, and you can see his skin beginning to come off. So check this out real quick. <laughs> So much of this film is a mind bender. It is a psychological thriller. It definitely leans into that dystopian perspective of overstep from government and medical officials and really where we're heading possibly as a society ourselves as we increase our technology and have this never ending search for humanity's constant perfection. Whenever we are a naturally imperfect being to begin with, how far should we go? That is the philosophical debate within this film from Peter Zulkin himself in 1980, 40 years ahead of his time. Here we find ourselves roughly 40 years later with very similar conundrums at hand. So I really appreciated the film from that angle. Again, the film quality was fantastic. I really enjoyed looking at this Blu-ray saying, wow, this could have been a film that as I was watching it would have been made just a few years ago. The audio, you know, hey, it's a 2.1 mono. It's not the anything that's going to be uh, earth shattering. It's it's very basic audio, but it's not a action thriller type of a film. So I'm okay with that when it comes to a mono type of a soundtrack. But yeah, overall, I give the video quality a four and a half out of five on this. I give the audio a pretty standard three out of five. Nothing's wrong with that whatsoever. The film overall, I really enjoyed. I think it really gets you thinking. I will say it was a bit confusing, to me at least, again, to understand what was actually happening in each timeline. 
was this golem one, golem two? Was this an actual human? I had to kind of go back and Google the purpose, the meaning behind the entire film to fully understand it. So I would say that it had me kind of confused. And for that reason, I'll probably give it a two and a half out of five on an average basis because it does tend to get a watcher lost. At least it did me. Maybe that's just me. But overall, I think the film contains very enlightening perspectives in terms of where we're going as a future, as a society, as humankind. Let's not dismiss the fact this type of stuff is going on right now. I mean, I, I love Elon Musk and all, but he's talking about this chip that you can put inside your brain. You know, how, people are going to do it. There's going to be somebody out there who does it. Uh, it will not be me, but someone out there and many others will probably follow along in terms of this search for the perfect human being. Where will it lead us? What is the true outcome? What is the true, I guess, agenda behind all of it? Can we trust the people that are trying to impart this upon us? I know this film is made in a fictional way, but it does hearken to some real life perspective. So I hope you enjoyed this. We got three more of these to come from Peter Zolkin's Apocalypse Tetralogy. This is Golem. Stay tuned for all the other ones. We're going to do War of the Worlds, Turn of the Century next, which was another banger of a film, I think even better than Golem. So stay tuned for that. If you were here the whole time with me, I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Don't forget to hit that like button. And do leave your comments. Let me know your thoughts on this. Have you watched the film? Do you intend to watch the film? How much do you really believe that we're going to head down this dark path? Or is it going to be more of a... Hey, it'll all be just fine. Love to have some common perspective and thoughts from you all as you watch and digest this. Thank you for being here. Appreciate you tuning in. And as always, do continue to find your way through your own why, all the while remembering life is not in our hands, my friends. It all begins up here in that head of ours with that perspective and belief systems that lead to more happiness and success or the shackling of disempowerment, which we don't want anyone to be there. So thank you for tuning in. Do take care for now.